just want to say a couple of words about what I mean by the need for law to be renewed or not to be renewed. Renewal sounds like a good thing, doesn't it? Renewal, modernization, constantly changing technological society, financial products constantly developing, financial markets innovating. This all sounds positive. This all sounds like the sort of thing we want. I don't disagree with that. However, what we've seen in the financial crisis of 2007 through 2009, and notice those dates, is that financial information innovation carries with it dangers, risks. And therefore, there is a need also for a cadre of ongoing common sense. We don't need to be writing off the past all the time to be able to innovate in the future. We've got to accept that a lot of innovation will fail. A lot of new ideas will turn out not to be such good new ideas. We've all done that, haven't we? You have a great idea. Far into the night, you wake up in the morning and think, my God, what kind of fool am I? Same is true of financial markets, financial law, financial regulation. We mustn't simply throw over the past because we want to do something new, because new sounds exciting. Instead, I think what we have to do as lawyers is to recognise what has always been good in the law. Central tenets of criminal law, central tenets of contract law, central tenets of property law. And actually, innovation is much more likely to succeed if it's able to use those sorts of principles, the certainties that are bound up in some of those principles, as a jumping off point. Yes. If you know that the platform beneath your feet will stay beneath your feet, then it's much easier for you to spring off and jump. If you don't know whether or not that will still be there, there's a risk. So when I say that law should remain as a bedrock, for example, in the introduction to my book, Law of Finance, I do mean that. There's a lot of common sense. There's also a lot of inherent flexibility in those concepts and norms. I don't think we should be throwing that over just because new renewal innovation sounds sexy. We must remember what's always been there and useful in our past, what's always been there and useful in our law. And perhaps, just perhaps, in the financial crisis of 2007 through 2009, if the lawyers and regulators had stuck to their guns a little bit more decisively, determinedly, we might have been able to rein in some of the worst excesses of what was going on in securitisation and similar markets. A lot of us have been warning about the risks of derivative products for a very long time. A lot of the weaknesses in standard market documentation of these products. A lot of things like the, credits, the ISDA credit support deed, for example, providing that the, the parties mortgage, charge and pledge certain assets. What we should have done is to look to our very old and very ancient property law and realise that those concepts cannot coexist in the same piece of property at the same time. You either mortgage or you charge or you pledge. By not looking at our history, by not being careful about what that history means, we are overlooking some very basic problems and we're creating brand new problems for ourselves. A real vogue, a real fad in financial regulation for having light touch regulation, for not interfering with financial innovation too much, encourage the Financial Services Authority to take a hands-off approach to financial markets. And what happened, whether we can say one caused the other or not, and I'm not entirely sure we can be that straightforward about it. What certainly happened as an end result was that huge risks were taken, unanticipated losses were suffered, and we all know the, loss, the, the mess we're in now. An aggregate loss it's reckoned of about $2 trillion as a result of this crisis. And a marketplace deciding that it could all behave together and all act in a particular way and everything would turn out all right in the end. Well, believe me, it didn't. So when I say that we have to look for what's good in the law, when I say that we shouldn't just throw the law over, that's what I mean. There's a lot of common sense in a lot of these old principles. I don't think we should throw them over simply as part of a lust for innovation. And this is something we have to remember as we educate ourselves about financial law today in the 21st century. 
we will soon forget, if we're not very careful, the depth of this crisis, the panic it created, if a huge amount of public money hadn't been invested to prop up the banks, a huge amount of public money, then there would have been straightforward collapse in the financial system. We cannot ever forget what happened here. We cannot ever allow that to happen again. That doesn't mean we stop innovation. That means we retain our straightforward common sense. And we as lawyers have a role to play in ensuring that these mistakes aren't made again.